Thomas Green here with Ethical Marketing Service. On the episode today, we have Stephen Rudolph. Stephen, welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas. Nice to be with you. It is nice to have you. Would you like to take a moment and tell the audience a bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. I help people identify their natural abilities and then align those abilities with what they do so they can take better decisions about their career, about their personal life, and get more of what they really want in life. So that's in a nutshell. Well, that sounds like something that I should be doing. So um, prior to our conversation, uh, I filled out the assessment form. Um, Would you like to open with, um, I don't know, did I do a good job? Um, Am I in trouble? (laughs) Or do do I get a gold star? Well, here's the thing, right? Every, I mean, this, this is not to say that like, it's not just like everybody passes um, because what we're talking about here is not comparing people, uh, you know, people to other people, which is typically what we do when we take tests or assessment here. What we're looking for is your uniqueness. That's the most important thing. And then once we know what your uniqueness is, or once, especially, you know, what your uniquenesses are, your, I call them your tigers, your natural abilities, you're then in the best position to be able to figure out how to put your best foot forward, your feet forward, or your best tigers forward in that situation. So doing that is what would make you successful in this process. That's, that's how you pass, quote unquote. (laughs) Right. So I'm ahead of myself, basically. Um, yeah. I guess before we start, how do we how do we feed our tigers? Is that what you reference regarding um, yes. playing to your strengths? Right. So yeah, my my the line that I my quotable is feed your tigers before they eat you. That's what I like to say. And what I mean by this is that you let's say let's talk about you directly, Thomas. This is the entire audience, but like you have some natural abilities that you've had since you were a kid that developed, especially in the first seven years of your life. And those natural abilities, they're like super highways in your brain for conducting electricity and um, for you to be able to develop skills on top of. And for some people, and they're, so these are what I call, these are what I call um, tigers. They consist of things like logic, for example, working with numbers and math and things like that. They consist of things like your body, being athletic and exercising. Uh, They consist of things like being self-reflective. So understanding your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions. So you'd know that you were strong. I'm just giving a few examples. You'd know that your logical tiger is a big one if you're good with math and numbers and you were always good at it, found it came easy to you, probably saw other people making mistakes and like, oh, I can't. or you're intrapersonal, like you're always find yourself in browsing self-help books or philosophy or psychology or watching videos or things like that. Uh, or if you love athletics and you're always exercising, that's a what I call gross bodily tiger. Now I've picked up on those three because those tend to be three of your bigger tigers. I don't know if you were responding as I was, as I was saying that. I was as internally opposed, nodding. Yes. yes right. I, I could see the things. head going. Right. So, so that's how you scored yourself, right. On, on the assessment, it's called the MN tests and the multiple natures test. And I can see a smaller tiger here, which is your interpersonal. So that means that your tendency to want to interact with others and be around a lot of people for long periods of time and start conversations with strangers, et cetera, is not as big compared to others. It's not that you're antisocial necessarily, but it's just that, say, compared to your uh, tendency to want to work with numbers or to exercise, um, that's, it's not as big. Well, you might be, that might be too kind to, to say that. I think uh, that's very, very okay. much accurate. So uh, could, it could be even smaller than the way that I described it. Was I was even that smaller mean? tiger than that? Yeah. Okay. Maybe maybe right, it's so, a, a tiny cat or a kitten. All right. So so now we, and so here's the thing that I want to say. I want to pick up one word that you said before. You said the word strength, right? And so this is what's unique about the way that I approach this because. When I hear many people talking about their abilities, or I've seen different models that are out there, they often talk about things like find your strengths, right? Lead with your strengths, 
I even hear this horrible thing, which is turn your strength, turn your weakness into a strength, which is just like insane and just bad and wrong in many ways. And what I mean by this is that these are all abilities. I love to call them tigers because they're just fun. And so what it means is that you've got a natural ability to work with numbers. It comes easily to you. You've got this natural ability also, uh, as, as you've expressed in administration, so in being organized and getting things done, right? Um, and in self-reflection. So if you have to do any activities that make use of those particular functions, it, it comes quickly to you. It's innately, your brain is wired for that because it got wired like that when you were young, whether you realized it or not, whatever situation you were in when you were young, you were exposed to circumstances that caused those to develop. I don't want to get into too much of those details because that it just becomes a little bit philosophical and, and whatnot. The important thing to recognize you know, whether you got there because of good reasons or bad reasons, they've developed and they're here and they can serve you now. And so if you, um, when you choose, make choices for um, careers, for instance, like these opportunities come to you or certain tasks that you have to work on, if you know that the, the tigers that are appropriate for this task um, will suit me and you can align them the right way, then you're in a position of strength. You're in a position of be aligning yourself for success. And I'm going to give you an example here, which counters this idea of strengths and weaknesses. So, so for you, because your, your logic is on the higher side and your administrative is on the higher side, you might have an ability to do something like software programming, for instance. Right? And because your interpersonal is a little bit on the lower side and your entertaining is also on the lower side as you've also uh, marked it, right? You know, somebody who's constantly outgoing and making lots of jokes and being you know, boisterous and, and whatnot. Um, Just look at my face. <laughs> exactly. So, so in this situation, like if you were to do software programming, then it would, it would benefit you to have smaller tigers like this in this area. I'm saying, I'm just giving an example because a programmer needs to have logic. They need to be organized and administrative. Um, and if you were highly interpersonal and highly entertaining, it would get in your way to do software programming because you don't want to be talking to people. You want to be joking. You'd want to be interacting. And that would not allow you to get deep into the code and to, you know, find all those things out. So it's not that you couldn't do it. It's just that those would be in this situation, I say weaknesses, they would be liabilities. It's a better way to put it. Um, as opposed to somebody else who was an actor or an influencer who would need to have those qualities, and they, they would need to have those as, as big tigers. So that's, that's just the way that I line it up. And, and there are so many permutations and combinations and way to mix it. But what I see people doing is trying to do activities that are not based on their superhighways that developed when they were young, but they're trying to, to build them on neural pathways, on abilities that are like, that are like paths that, that you're cutting through the jungle with a machete, right? That's really what it's like. It's hundreds of times faster when it's based on these, these innate talents. Very interesting. Did you take the set test yourself? Me? Yeah, of course. Many, multiple times. How'd it go? I'm the first. <laughs> well, um, good in the sense that I've, it, I've really figured out where my big, small, and big, medium, and small tigers are. And, and I have to say this. It's not that I've just figured out, okay, these are my tigers, and this is the work I'm going to do. And then it's on cruise control. My work also fluctuates. Like sometimes I have to do more of the things that are aligned with my nature. And sometimes I have to do things that are not aligned with my nature. So it's all, it's kind of like if you have a garden and you need to keep tending to the garden in order to maintain it. And in the same way, I have to keep maintaining my tigers and I become better at that. Sometimes it's gotten a little almost out, I would say out of control. Like I'm, overfeeding certain tigers and I'm underfeeding others. 
And I know what are the signs that I look for. And so I'm better at not allowing myself to get out of control. What I mean out of control is like when you're leaning toward burnout or you're starting to eat too much chocolate or sweets or drink too much coffee or use substances or um, go shopping or do other things that compensate for feelings of frustration when your tigers are not aligned. So I'm much better at spotting myself right at the beginning. Well, it kind of sounds like the the, the well self knowledge anyway. I think is a is a great thing to have. Um, and the strengths, I don't know whether you'd say that you you might be naturally drawn to those things. But given like in in my instance, for example, you you mentioned the fact that well, you you told me a, a bunch of stuff which is you know makes total sense. It's then what what is done about the weakness side of things that interests me. So let's say you find out you have a particular weakness in this area. What do you do then? So again, I'll call them small tigers, right? Rather than call them weaknesses. So, so if you've got a smaller tiger in a particular area, but you're in a job that's requiring you to use that quality all the time. So that's what, that's how I would define quote unquote weakness. But again, I would call it more of a liability than I would say um, a weakness, but for argument's sake, I mean, just to to go along this this route, what do you do when you find yourself in a situation where you you have to bank on a quality where you're not as naturally inclined to do that? And a very common example is some people like with the administrative. In your case, it seems as though your administrative tigers is leaning toward the bigger side. It's easier for you to keep things organized and so on. But there are some people who are not like that. They're not naturally organized. They might be like you were saying with the interpersonal, it's down at like a three. There are some people whose t- their kitten, right, or their cub is the administrative, and then they find themselves in a managerial position, right? So they have the Peter principle, and if, I don't know if you know that, right? You you rise to your highest level of incompetence, right? You start off as a great programmer, and then you become a good lead programmer and then you become a poor um you know manager of the IT department and you become a lousy vice president of technology and you become an awful CEO who tanks the company right because at each level in each of these areas it uses they use different qualities what made you a great program an amazing programmer was that logic and maybe you know your administrative or linguistic but what would make a much better manager would be interpersonal what would be a great CEO would be entrepreneurial. It's a, it's, a, it's a different tiger. And so if you find yourself in a situation where you you have to bank on an ability, a talent that's not one of your, your superpowers, uh, one of these larger tigers, then you need to consider. Consider means it could be, I mean, it could be as small as, talking to somebody, well, it could be as small as just bearing it and pushing through, but that's not going to last very long. If you have an ability, whether you're, if you're employed by somebody, you might want to speak to a boss or somebody in HR about getting support or maybe taking some of those particular activities off of your plate. Maybe you might want to do a lateral shift from like sales, active sales, where you're selling things, doing cold calls. You would need to be very adventurous. You would need to be highly entrepreneurial. And then maybe you can make a lateral move into sales support where you don't have to be as interpersonal or I'm sorry, as entrepreneurial or as adventurous, but you might need to be more supportive and providing. So want to help people and be there for them to give them that, that sort of support. They're both sales roles. And these people might be working in the same office area or you know, department. It's just that they're the natures of what's required from both of those types of roles are completely different. So I would say lateral moves are a really great way to deal with that. That's like one great move. And then at a certain point, it could be a a change in your career if it's significant enough. Um, if you're really heading toward burnout, there are many techniques that you could you could use, but those are some of them. So what would you expect to see, let's say, timeline of a career or working life? What would you expect to see of someone who 
let's say, uh, has is feeding their tigers, their big tigers, and um, someone who is fighting against or having yeah. to deal with little tigers all the time. The the contrast between those, what would yeah. you say signs of those would be? If somebody gets it right from the beginning, then the, then what you get is meteoric growth and success. The kind of people who are just like rising stars and they just keep on going, 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 they get recognition, incredible skill development. Um, typically, financially, they do very well for themselves. And mind you, this has nothing to do with an, with other areas of health and happiness and success, because there are plenty of people who make great fortunes, but then also sabotage themselves in their lives by substance abuse otherwise, or um, you know, burning through all of their money. We see, we've seen stories of that people who lose control and wind up in, um, uh, having problems of addiction and whatnot. So this is not, uh, I just want to say that this is not a panacea. It's not to say just because your tigers are aligned that you're guaranteed a happy life. But one thing is for sure that if you do have those other things under control, that you've got a, a sense of, um, a sense of balance in life and a healthy self, um, a healthy sense of self, then when you do align these things, you will see, I mean, when I say meteoric growth in your, or, or evolution or development in your career, you're going to see that not everybody hits that level. I mean, sometimes what you'll find is like a Bill Gates or a Warren Buffett or something like that. They started when they were really young you know, like 12 years old or 10 years old. And so you have people who are almost like prodigies. And so the fact that their tigers were aligned really at a really early age enabled them to hit levels of expertise at a really early age. So then that's why they become so well-known and so famous, or at least partially, that's not the only reason. There, there are other, other factors of that. And then of course you have people on the other end of the spectrum, people who they, they still, they could be good people, ethical people, people who've worked hard over their lives. But then when they look back, they feel as though they never quite, quote unquote, figured out what they wanted to be when they grew up. And they can even tell you that they did jobs and it, it just never really worked out for them. And I've also, I've done my assessment with people in their 60s and in their 70s, because many times there are people who are retiring who want to figure out uh, what what it is that they want to do in their retired life. And sometimes they joke, they say, you know, when I grow up, and I, I remember a client that I worked with a number of years back, and he said to me after doing the test, and he looked at his results, and he said, you know what? He said, this confirmed what I really knew all along. I never should have been um, in business. He, he got up to the level of a CEO. He said, I was never great at it, and I always hated it. He said, I've made a bit of money, but it just never clicked with me. So it's interesting to see that that's what happens when the alignment is not there, is a person feels like they're fighting themselves, fighting the world, that some black cloud or over them, or there's some, you know, the, the universe is working against them. You know, something is just not allowing them to succeed. Well, I certainly think, I mean, I'm sure it'd be beneficial for both kind of people, but I certainly think in terms of problem solving, like it's going to be for those people who feel like they're not, I don't know, they're bouncing around different careers. Now, I did that uh, when I first started out. I did all kinds of different jobs and industries and stuff. Mm. And I feel like if I had, I don't know, maybe access to this type of assessment or I knew of it, then um, mm. that would have been extremely beneficial for yeah for me and maybe someone who's also watching in that in that position. Yeah, and the reason for that is because it's very time consuming and expensive in terms of resources and et cetera, to try a new career um, where, or a new job where you need to learn, sometimes relearn, get new certif certificates, certification or degrees, uh, develop certain skills. And it could be months or even years to get up to speed before you realize that, hey, wait a minute, um, no, this is not for me either. Now, like three years are shot. And then we say, okay, you know, we say 
some sort of a line to make ourselves not feel so bad about the fact that we've made a choice which didn't really work for us. Of course, there's something, you know, you learn something about yourself in the process and you you do gain certain skills. Um, but I don't think that that's, mo that's what people really aspire to. I think that people aspire to finding out what works for them so they can get greater progress and reap the rewards of whether it's having you know more more financial resources or more status or those kind of we can't deny that that also exists so by doing this you save time because you can most kind of like a scientist with a hypothesis right you make a hypothesis based on things that you know so i know for example if somebody ha is naturally gifted they've got a prodigious you know sized tiger that is let's just say administrative and let's just say like highly interpersonal so that person would be well inclined for being a manager like i could just see it even if they don't realize it even if and as i said you can figure out this stuff even without the assessment when it when a kid is about seven years old you can already see these qualities there I mean, forget about when they're in their teens. You can see most of this by the time that someone's seven. You'd be amazed. I can even see these in my daughter, who's like two. And um, and that's that's something that's amazing. So, but anyway, um, it's valuable for people to find this out as early as possible because once you know this, you're in a much better position to take decisions and decisions that are going to based on your hypothesis, like is this career going to work out for me? So before you decide to take that plunge and invest like months or years in it, only to find out that you know, it didn't work out, you can you can predict ahead of time and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, I might not. You know where this happens a lot, Thomas, is like with people starting businesses. So there's one tiger, which is I call an entrepreneurial tiger. This is a natural ability to create value and to extract value. And of course, we see it in entrepreneurs, people who just have this ability to see opportunities, bring them together, enroll people around it, create a product or a service or something of value, and then money starts to come and people are getting benefited and it starts to grow. This is something which, which although people might, there are skills that are involved, but when you talk to most people who are, have big entrepreneurial tigers, they'll, they'll tell you that it's innate that they've got it. In the same way that when you talk to people who are highly entertaining, I remember listening to an interview with Eddie Murphy years ago. He was on Actors Guild, I, th I think that was the, and um, I forgot the name of the host, but he asked him, you know, he said, is, is this thing innate or can somebody learn it? He said, no. He said, this is, it's innate. I, I know it, I've seen it with, with other, you either have it or you don't. Um, people don't like to hear that, but that's, that's the truth. And what I, so why I say this is because I see this time and again, um, somebody has an entrepreneurial nature, tiger, that's not big, it's small. They just don't have that natural ability to be able to see value and opportunities. And they do courses or they read books and they fashion themselves that way. Um, but when push comes to shove, and I've seen it over over decades. So they're talking about doing something entrepreneurial when they're in their 20s, and they're still talking about it like in their 40s and 50s, and it's not gone anywhere. And so is it that they've had bad luck or maybe they just don't have that? So for example, I, I say to people before, people love to take the entrepreneurial plunge and find out if it works, before you do that, see if you really have that natural capacity because if not, Maybe you're better off working with somebody who's got it and you bring the idea or the creativity or the people skills or, or uh, the, the support or some, some other beautiful thing that's required in a company to make it succeed. You don't have to be the head honcho uh, as, as the entrepreneur. So that would take um, like a business partner relationship, something mm -hmm. like that. Absolutely. It could be, it, it could be there. And even in my case, I know that my entrepreneurial tiger is a big one. Um, but I was also seeing that in my own work as an entrepreneur, I, I lacked a certain level of ability to bring it beyond a certain point. 
Like I could get the the airplane like flying down the runway, but really to get it like, you know, to get that lift. So I brought in, um, I, I, I found somebody who's my, my partner and I saw him, he's like a serial entrepreneur. So it's like, he's done it multiple times, right? And so I said to myself, you know, what's important to me to have a hundred percent of like, you know, a little bit or, or, you know, a lesser percent of something much larger as an entrepreneur. And not just for the financial gain of what comes to me, but also what I bring out to other people. And that's what's interesting that, that I learned from him. That's where I really understood that where he had a, a bigger entrepreneurial tiger than me, he said, he would always say to me, Stephen, stop thinking about money. He said, think about value. Like, are you really bringing value to people? What is the, and he's, he's always asked me this question again and again. Stop thinking about money. Talk about value. If you bring value, money will come. Don't worry about the money. And it's so odd, like you would never, you would think that entrepreneurs are talking about money all the time. Mm -mm, mm -mm. He's always talking about value. So I'm just trying to give you an idea of like, cause sometimes when people do this test, right? And they're asked questions about their, they're asked, they're asked questions about their entrepreneurial tiger. You know, I'll ask them, do you think you have a big, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I've got an, I've got a company and I, you should see my branding and I've got the whole thing. But then when you ask them practically, you know, like, give me examples, give me evidence of where you can see it in your life. It's all about their projection and their, um, their romanticizing the idea as opposed to what they've practically done. So, and it's like that for the other tigers as well. You know, you'll know it not by what a person says about it or what they aspire to, but by what comes naturally to them, what they've accomplished already. So that's, those are some of the tests, like how you can really know. And it's important to really know that so you don't, you don't set yourself up for disappointment. So why did you, why did you start this? Why did you do it? Why did I start Multiple Natures? Yeah. Well, I started it for a real practical purpose, which was uh, when I was in India, I opened up a school and my idea for the school was that every child would know who they were. And I needed to have a model. How do you know, like, who you are? I found Howard Gardner's model. That's these things about the bodily intelligence and the musical intelligence and the um, interpersonal and logical. So those were qualities or traits that I found useful in trying to identify what makes a child unique. And so I was using that to help children decide on their future, to pick which sort of careers they would go into and whatnot. Um, it wasn't enough. That's why I developed the nature's model, which brings in these other points of healing and entertaining and providing and being protective and um, adventurous. So I created it because there was a need. There was a need for me to help kids figure out who they were and to help them make decisions about their careers. So that's that was like... And they say necessity is the mother of invention. I needed an awesome model. And I didn't like the other models that I saw. I, I couldn't understand how you could arrive at a career decision based on, or, or I didn't like that they slotted them into categories. You're a this, and that's what you are. And they would give it some sort of a title. You're a that. And, and, and I saw how unique and nuanced and complex people were. So I wanted a model that was like, that really spoke about the uniqueness of each person. And so that's what drove me to evolve or develop this, this particular model. Well, congratulations on, on doing it. I think it's a, it's a great achievement. Um, one step back from your answer about um, 21 year journey to India, why India yeah. and how did that come about? So why India? Well, at the time, so when I was 22 and I had this idea that I wanted to make a school where everybody knew who they were, I was thinking of opening up the school in New York. And a friend of mine happened to be in India at the time, a college buddy of mine. He's like, hey, man, like, don't do it there. Like, come to India. Do, do it. He had, been, he had been in India for a while. We were writing letters at that time. So this is like in, in the 90s, right before email really hit. And so, so I just was fascinated with that possibility. Um, it was, India was just starting out with the software thing at that time. I remember when I went there in 94, it was like the new Silicon Valley and, you know, the world, blah, 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 and IT. So 
kind of looked like it was on the rise and I wanted to try out something. There was my adventurous tiger, right? So I figured I would have an adventure. So that's, that's what brought me there. And then also the, the depth of knowledge and culture, wisdom, spirituality that existed there. I was interested to explore that, to know like what's there, what can I know about myself and what can I know about the human being and human potential. So it was really an unknown for me. And um, well, t- 21 years, I got my fill. <laughs> so I stayed there for that long just to, to get as much as I could out of the experience. And then once I, once I felt like, okay, I've learned enough, then I, in 2015, then I said, okay, it's time for me to go back to the West and take what I've learned here and share it. So that's what, that's what got me there. And that's why I stayed so long. Well, if it is possible to summarize that amount of time, what happened? What happened while, while I was there? Yeah. Well, that was, yeah. So what, what happened was that, um, well, for me, it's like that, that journey that, that people go through. Um, I discovered myself. And I discovered this tool, and I was able to bring this tool out both for my own personal benefit to help me figure out how to feed my own tigers, and then to be able to bring it to other people so they would be able to make use of it. And at the end, I've been able to um, re re enter life in, I guess, like in a new way. So I'm much more. I'm much more who I am, I guess I could. Yeah. So that's what happened. So thank you. It took me a second to, to work through that, to figure out what happened was I really figured out who I was. I figured out what my natural abilities were from early on before I became conditioned. And I shed many of my misbeliefs about myself so I could really get connected with who I was and, and get myself aligned and, and to get into that that deep level of what I talked about before, swasta, of, uh, of alignment, you know, being, being connected to who you are. So that's what I got out of it. You don't have to go to India for 21 years to be <laughs> able to do that. I hope to be able to shorten the, you know, the time it takes for any individual to be able to achieve that with, with what I've created. Like you should be, you should be able to. I'm sorry, you were asking. Uh, do you mind sharing what those are? What did you, what did you learn? What did you think that you were and what was, what was false about that? Sure. Um, I think that um, the things where, where I was a bit off was that my creative is really high. My creative is really high. My administrative is not, is a small, is a small one like, like yours. And I would say that my, I realize that my logic is also not one of the biggest ones and my entrepreneurial is high, but not at, at that level. So from an entrepreneurial sense, what I realized is that if I wanted my ideas to reach a wider public, to reach, reach a wider um, audience that I would need to have other people who would do administration. So I needed to hire my bosses, so to speak. So now I have two people, not one, but two people who do, who administrate and they keep me in line and they tell me, did you do this? Did you do that? Have you followed up with this? It's not that I can't, it's just that it's not a super highway for me. So having that gives me just it just takes that that process out of my head and other people follow that up so i can do my creative and my educative and with my other my partner he brings in the um entrepreneurial and the logical so he's highly logical highly entrepreneurial and that complements me really well so for me i'm the creative the educative entertaining 
intrapersonal. So what I've done is I've like found a way to surround myself. Like, you know, you hear people talk about this thing. How did, what's your, you know, how, what's your key to success? How did you succeed? Oh, I surrounded myself with people who are smarter than me. Right. And we're like, uh, like how many times you just want to, right. When you hear people say that it's not just like people who are smart because you know, when they say that, like, you know, that they're there, there's something like they're lying when they say that, because how could you be that successful if it was just people? But he, I think what people mean to say, and what I would say is, I've surrounded myself with people who are highly complimentary to me, who've got the, the big tigers where I don't have them. And so at least from a business perspective, like that's totally worked for me. And it took me a while to realize a lot of that. And I would say I'm still not perfect and I'm getting better at it, um, but it's enabled me to um, have a degree of comfort and more than anything that I get to do more of the kind of stuff that I really enjoy on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's by design. That's not just like luck. Um, and it, it wasn't that I had to over, I, I figured this out and now I've set myself up that way. So um i'm grateful for that and so that gives me that gives me a good deal of happiness so that was that's what i got out of out of my 21 year journey but you don't have to do that it's anybody can like figure i i've got a i've got a method for that so so take advantage of it well um thank you for the the next time i hear surround yourself with successful people i've got a little trigger now i've got a better answer mm. that's going to pop into my yeah. head so i appreciate yes. that um, yeah. Did you want to cover anything else in uh, either my assessment or what other people will receive when they do theirs? Yeah, so um, I can mention, um, well, let me let me ask you this, and this is the important thing, like anytime you do an assessment or anytime you're understanding something about your tigers, there's two things. One is like some of the things that we did right now, which is that we looked at what some of your bigger ones uh, were, bigger tigers, and which some of your smaller ones were, right? Like, so... Uh, another one of like your administrative is one of your biggest natures. Your educative is also one of your bigger ones. So that's that's your tendency to want to teach, to explain and help others learn. And not surprisingly, your healing is also one of your bigger ones. So this is a tendency to feel the pain of other people and to want to get them into a state of balance as well as providing. So wanting to serve and help and care for, um, you know, it's an empathy of need of other people. So I can see that those are some of your, your bigger ones um, in terms of the, the natures. Creative is not as big as some of the other ones. Adventurous is not as big as some of the other ones. Those come in about, about halfway. And so the first thing that's important to do is just to figure out like where, what are my tigers, which ones are big, which are medium and which are small. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is like, what are you facing right now? Like what question are you facing? Because this is not like a, an absolute kind of thing. Like, okay, now I know what my tigers are. Then I need to know what's my perfect career. And then I live happily ever after. So that's like, that's like this really um, sim overly simplistic way of, of looking at it. The way I would look at it is to ask, what question do you have now that you're trying to shed some light on? And if I look at my tigers, is there a way for me to use that information to help me make a better decision? So that might be, I'm thinking of doing an additional part-time job to make some money, for example. Like some people would say, I want, you know, I've got a little extra time on the weekends. And what should I do to make some more money? So you Google like... Um, you Google make extra money online and then it'll say, Hey, here are the top 10 ways in 2020, you know, whatever to, um, make money online. You can be an affiliate. You can have, you can be an influencer. You can make stuff and sell it on Etsy. You get right. And so they're just going to give you this whole, and each one of those uses such different tigers. It's not a matter of like, you know, uh, which one will make me the most money. It's really a matter of which does, which do my tigers align with? Because if making stuff and selling it on Etsy is more your thing, where you would need fine bodily intelligence, so you would need to have great dexterity, you'd need to have visual, you'd need to have creative. So those are the important things if you want to like make and sell stuff on Etsy. If you're doing affiliate programs where you're selling other people's programs, courses, you know, software, et cetera, on the internet, 
Well, there most likely you'll need linguistic because you're going to have to blog about it or write about it, or maybe you need the the inter um, the entertaining because you might do video blogs, um, and then you're going to have to do analytics. So get ready for if you don't have super high logical and then administrative because you have to like manage all those numbers and stuff like that, then you're going to kill yourself. And then there's ways of dealing with that. So you might not have the administrative. You could get a virtual assistant uh, at a very low cost who could take that over for you. But you are going to need to have the that logical. So that's the way that I would approach it. So my question to you would be, is there something that you're contemplating or something you, you could share or something you were contemplating um, where you would want some light shed? And then we could see. Um, well, there is, but I'm not sure. It might be a bit of a tricky one, but uh, you're a man that's probably up to the task. So okay. I am lacking a long-term goal. And mm -hmm. predominantly, I think it's because when I have set, I mean, I say goal, really, it's like, what, what are you working towards, right? So mm -hmm. I have met or, yeah, I've met all the things that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I am, I've achieved what I wanted to achieve. And now I think that, I think it's beneficial to have something that you're working towards, but I don't mm -hmm. know what it, what it should be. When you when you say this, are you talking more like on the lines of meaning, purpose, or some sort of milestones or something for like legacy, like at which because it could be shorter term in terms of like, um, you know, um, um, for earning or for life or for family or something which might be within this the realm of security, um, family life, et cetera. But then beyond that, there's also things for, for like long-term legacy, which might be, you know, deeper purpose or like which, at which point are you looking or, or is it kind of like both? I'm not sure I have the right answer to that. Um, the way I think of it is like working life. What do I do, want to do with my working life? So how would you describe, okay, let me, let me put it this way. And this is also an interesting way to help figure this out. Let's imagine that you have um, a restaurant and you have something which I call um, like, a, you've got a menu in a restaurant, right? So you've got the appetizers, you have the main course, and then you have dessert. So you get most of your nutrition from the main course. You get some nutrition from the appetizer. There's some fun in there also, right? And then you get almost no nutrition from the dessert. You never think like, okay, I'm going to have a chocolate mousse and how is this nutritionally beneficial toward me? So it's, it's just all fun, right? So in the same way, um, your main job that brings you your, your basic revenue typically is your, your, like your main course, right? That's, and then you might have some side work that could be some other part-time things. And that's your, that's like, you get some money from that, but some pleasure. And then you've got a, uh, hobbies and, ta and, you know, leisure activities where you might get pleasure from that, but then you're not earning anything from that. So one place that I start is to take a look to see where are your tigers being fed? Like for me, this is the place that I start. I don't always start with that long-term, like, you know, what, what do I want to do or whatever? I take a look at my current situation right now. And I take a look at my bigger tigers and I say, are my tigers being fed right now? Are they being fed through my main work? How would you describe your main work that you do? Like your, I mean, do you, do you do metse where you have a lot of like part-time things or do you have like a main J-O-B that, that takes care of, of the things for you? Um, yeah, so my business is um, a marketing agency and that that's predominantly where I spend my time and then also what, where I make my living from. Okay, so... So what we can, what we would do there is to see, um, we would see um, your bigger tigers, right, are logical. So that's going to be fed from, you know, things where you do, if you're doing analytics. Um, and here you've got the issue around interpersonal being a smaller one, because if you're doing marketing, you have to deal with people constantly. That's someplace that you're, that you're going to want to think about what what you're going to do and how you're going to deal with that. How many people you're dealing with on a daily basis? I'm, I'm like, and how, or how, what percentage of your day is interacting with other people? I'm not really customer facing anymore. So, um, okay. The, so that the employees of the business typically deal with that. Right. Okay. So that's, that would be a, that's a smart move and your administrative is high. So it looks like you'll, you would be able to keep people on task. Your entrepreneurial I see as 
uh, above average, uh, according to the way you've rated yourself, right? So that means that um, you'll be able to hold things together, but then probably to bring it up to a next a next level where you can expand, um, the balloon will only rise or the elevator will only go up like the same kind of thing that I that I faced. So that was one of the things that I faced and I've seen other people doing this, which is like, there's a point at which if the entrepreneurial isn't, isn't that, that large, you rise to a certain level and you can, you can keep it at that certain level and you could sustain it there. But then to go beyond that, if you've got to shoulder all of that, you can't, um, you can't get out of that. And there are other areas that might be begging for like what I call the hungry tigers. Like here, I, I can see your healing is bigger and your intrapersonal is bigger. Your bodily, intrapersonal, and healing are, are bigger ones. And you're providing, helping, helping others are not being, like if it's just, I mean, marketing in general, you might not be feeding those in your main course, so to speak. So what I would say is like, you know, of course, um, this is something that that would absolutely require us to spend more time in getting into in, in deeper conversations. But I'm just trying to show you in a short uh, in a short conversation where to be looking for where you could go. Where, like, as as I'm saying, if it's people and it's just pure entrepreneurship where you're leading it, you'll probably cycle up to a certain point, and then the the um, it's kind of like if you're in second gear and you've got it revved up to like, you know, 6,000 RPM or like, you know, six, it's, not, it's like redlining at that point. Um, whereas if you were to connect your body, your self-reflection, your uh, healing, educative and providing together, if you were to bring those together, now suddenly you'd be shifted into like fourth or fifth gear at that point. And then suddenly everything's going to start to open up. And if you passed out more of the entrepreneurial to somebody who was like at a level of, you know, more than a, say a six and a half, like at a nine, they might be able to create that space around you that will, that would allow you to like, just fill in, just, just like seep, seep into that, into that space. Um, and that's how I would, that's how I would look at it first. And so from, from the report, I can also see the our system will will talk about things that come naturally to you in terms of like activities and um, hobbies, careers, and thing things like that. So like stuff for you, health technologies is something that would work because that would bring together, and this is what the system is telling me, that would bring together your logical plus um, plus your healing. So if you were to move into that space, like the healing thing would kick in and the technology thing would kick in and your, right, your, your logic would just, th those two would interplay with each other and it would start to expand. And then what would happen is if you started to do that, um, opportunities will come to you, you'll find the opportunities. Um, other ones that, that are here, there's a different side also, which are things related to environment, um, things related to social work, because that also brings your providing and your educative in. So things that are good or programs or types of work that would help you to bring healing and education and, um, you know, where you're in service to other people would also feed you, when I say feed your tigers, that would also be like very, very powerful for you. Things related to setting educational standards and goals. So that's administrative plus logical plus educative. So not necessarily being the person who would teach something, but if you had to do something where there were a curriculum around and you were setting the standards for that to help people to learn about something, that would be something that would, that would connect really strongly with your natural, natural abilities. So those are just some, you know, some ways. And then of course, to make these decisions, we need to go back and to look at other things like where is your, where is your mastery of content? Like what things do you know? Um, where do you have degrees, areas where you've got knowledge expertise? Because to build skills on top of knowledge expertise plus your tigers, that's where things really, uh, things can really kick in. Because if we said, hey, you know, you could do something in 
um, you know, as, as a doctor, well, it's not going to be easy for you to go back and and to get a, a degree doing that at this at this point. But there certainly are ways that you could bring your healing potential to people uh, without having to to be a doctor. So, as I say, there are like thousands of these uh, mm -hmm. of of ways that you could go about about doing that. And company, like I'll give one example. I have a friend of mine who's um, he's he is a doctor, but he was also high in entrepreneurial and logic. He got into medical technologies. I think that was a way for him to bring his tech side also into the the bring together bring it together with the healing. It's a fascinating topic, and um, I think I mean you've mentioned some things that I haven't told you about, and um, there's a there's a lot of I mean, what I'm what I mean is that, that the results from what you've given me are are highly accurate um, from from my perspective. So I appreciate you spending the time sure. and going through with it with me. Um, I can totally see how other people would benefit from it, um, and I think it should something either this or something like this should be. Uh, I I like to think of it from obviously the person who doesn't know what they what they want to do, but I can also see how it would be beneficial for those who you know just want to feed their big tigers as you say is there anything that i should have asked you about today well i don't know about the should have but um i mean i i'm always i'm always open to to sharing if there are other questions you know you're always welcome to hit me up with them i love to talk about this i love to share things along these lines and i just want to see people find that degree of alignment and happiness in their lives because it's not it's it's doesn't have to be a mystery and people don't have to go through life um aligned with misaligned tigers it doesn't have to be that way so i i welcome any any questions along those lines at any time well congratulations again on what you have what you've built and um I can, like I said, I can I totally see how it'd be highly beneficial for people. We spoke um, previously regarding uh, the question that I ask almost everyone that comes on the, mm -hmm. on the podcast, and it is, what does success mean to you? Yeah, success for me is, in, in a sentence, being aware of all of my tigers and feeding them the right amount and being adaptive, whatever situation comes my way, to know which roles I should play in that directly, which roles I should delegate to other people, or find ways to get support around that and not try to do everything myself. So when I'm doing that from a professional point, that makes me successful. But, and beyond that, um, success for me is um, being happy with what I have, being happy with the small things. And yeah, I think to me, that's, that's the most, that's, that's success for me. If I'm, if I'm in that space, I can appreciate just being able to breathe and have some decent food and to know I'm not being persecuted um, to have good relationships with people after a long time in in searching for happiness in external things i found that it's much more in the small things and the internal things where i get the greatest amount of pleasure so that's well given that say. criteria would you say you're a successful individual yes i would say i'll say that there's there's still room for improvement <laughs> But using those criteria, I, I, I feel very, um, I feel aligned and I feel truthful and authentic to be able to, to say that. Well, that's good. But to I'll, hear. I'll, I'll, I'll still, I'll still, I'll still not let myself off the hook and say that, that my job is done. There's, there's still a way to go. <laughs> but if people want to take the test, where do they go? Feed your tigers, feedyourtigers.com. That's the website. We also have the site at multiplenatures.com, but too many websites to remember. So I just say, f remember the imperative, right? Feed your tigers before they eat you. And so feedyourtigers.com. Stephen, thank you very much for being a great guest today. 
Thanks, Thomas. It was fun getting to know you.